it's definitely starting to get autumnal here in Norfolk. We've had a couple of closed frosts over the last couple of uh, mornings. The temperature really dropping for the first time and it's quite a shock to the system after the summer we've had. These little apples, this tree's really struggling the last few years, it's on its way out I think. But it's fruited really well this year and they're a beautiful colour aren't they? Really very pretty. They are on a small side though. I think they look better than they actually are in a video. Just look, put my hand in there, you'll see more crab apples than eating apples. But it's producing some good fruit that's coming down. And it's lovely sitting in the barn, looking out and watching the birds. We're really enjoying this, particularly we've had crows, magpies, selection of rooks, and then the smaller birds also enjoying them, blackbirds and the thrushes coming and enjoying these and the insects that are also feeding off them. This little Bramley, this Bramley seedling I think is doing much better this year. It's the best it's fruited and it's formed some very good size fruit on here. Not full Bramley size, some of them are getting quite good but actually it's overset the fruit this year. We should have really thinned this down in June. Uh, hoping the June drop would do all that it would require to get some decent apples on this but again a lot of them just stayed on this year through the drought but still got another five six weeks for these to mature up bramley is one of the last ones we harvest here in norfolk and they'll stay on the tree till mid norfolk sorry mid october before we actually bring these into store and we've got a video showing you how we pick those and store them this old house is lucky enough to have what's called a cold pantry with an apple store in it. And these, if we get them without any damage and at the right time and ripeness, we'll store in that cold pantry right the way through till February. This apple won't store at all. Not entirely certain on the variety. It's a very fluffy, flowery, big thing. It does very well here, despite me having planted a huge poor Himalayan musk rose that's really mugging the poor thing now and cutting down a lot of the light. Still getting enough on this side to put on a good show. That's formed a fantastic crop of apples that we've been enjoying here for about three weeks now and they're baking really really well. Nice early one. Gets you in the mood for the Bramleys that will come on later in the season. Plenty higher up. These do fall and again the birds enjoy these. Roses on this arch coming into a second flush now. This is Gardener's Delight. Bit of bud coming on there. It's just, just if I go around the other side we've got even better. It's quite strange that all the flower at this time of year is on the eastern aspect. Very little on that southern or western aspect. Just look at these buds. The scent off these at this time of year is absolutely wonderful. Really rich full rose aroma worth cutting and bringing into the house because they do suffer at this time of year from the weather. We've had some real torrential downpours here and you can see it's paid a little price here with some scarring just forming on some of these buds but plenty more to come on and I think this should if we don't get too much in the way of air frosts and it just stays on the grass continue to flower right the way through until those frosts really knock this new growth back. But just look at it trying to escape up here. This is quite a vigorous rose and it's those new growths that we want to try and tie in and pull down as best we can to really maximise the bud and flower production next spring. We're starting to recover this little border which really has been badly neglected. Proving the soil with mushroom compost. You'll be aware by now, if you've watched a few of my videos, I'm a real big fan of this stuff. It's really revolutionised our gardening here this year. And the difference in size of plants, where they've been brought in, planted in the old soil and then put into soil that's been improved with this, is absolutely staggering. It really does pay for itself very, very quickly. So as we're cutting back and tidying up this board, and you can see it was started here on the back, we're putting a real good top layer of this in, about two to three inches where we can, right around all the established plants. That is going to mug some of the seedlings that are coming through here, but I don't mind because this is heavily overplanted and some of these 
herbaceous plants that have grown so nicely in here really do need the space rather than being mugged as they tend to in this border by the oxeye daisy that comes up every year. Again on this little border just to the side and back of the barn doing the same thing, edging it with the flint boulders that I'm recovering from the local quarry on a regular basis as I'm extending this border up. Got a nice straight edge on that one this afternoon with a line and again cut back here. Believe it or not that is um, that is a oh now I've gone blank. Hold on I'm gonna have to cut and remember the name of that plant. It's a lupin and it got absolutely eaten alive by black fly and green fly but cut that right down mulched around it it's a little bit of grass that i'm just pulling out and that should be fine little self-seeded strawberry plant here actually probably a runner that's come because this area here used to be my strawberry bed with a black plastic covering which had been down for about five years and the vigor had just gone we were getting no strawberries from it and what did form was eaten every time by the squirrels I've just about given up trying to grow strawberries, even under nets here. I need wire cages, I think, if I'm ever going to get a decent crop. Little lettuces in here. Again, the state of this soil has come to realise once you've had similar plants that we've transplanted from here into the, the new vegetable garden with the compost on, the difference in the growth that you get. These are slower and it does help stagger the crop a little. So. I've used this as a seed bed and trying to use soil that's had the mushroom compost on as a seed bed really doesn't work particularly well. So what we'll do is prick these out. It's a come and come again sort of uh, variety this of mixed um, varieties of lettuce. There's some oak leaf in there which I'm particularly fond of this year. You can just see one coming up there. It stands very well. There's been no bitterness in it at all and it's lasted really really well without running to seed whereas the other ones you can see eventually they'll run and those are at the back there i think that's probably just i don't know whether that's a lettuce or a thistle that's coming up and flowering through the top really need to get in there and do a little bit of weeding but if you want to see the difference that a good bit of soil improver makes these purple sprouting broccoli plants were planted in this soil exactly the same time as the ones I'm about to go and show you in the new vegetable garden. Okay, so here's the difference. Just look at the difference in size of these plants. They've put on about a foot to 18 inches of growth. Lovely great big leaf growth. All right, I've got some cabbage white butterfly caterpillars on these which I'm having to pick off. We're organic here, we don't spray them. The nets that are put over them are more to prevent the deer and rabbits and pigeons from helping themselves but it's certainly not butterfly netting. I think next year when I redo this I will use this very fine fleecy material for my cabbage bed but at the moment under there I've just got some late varieties of lettuce, some spinach plants, uh, spicy mix and then in the little pot that I'm just planting out at this time of year, just there, is uh, an overwinter, I think it's winter density or I um, can't remember the exact variety of that lettuce. I think it might be winter density that we're planting out and hopefully with a little bit of fleece protection we should get away with some lettuce right the way through until the frost get really really hard. The borders we've created here are really quite opportunistic. We just had these wooden joists that the builders took out when we were doing the barns and they were dumped down here in the paddocks to go on the bonfire I think but we looked at them and thought those are just the right length to make two adjoining beds so we've used eight of them knocked them together and then just filled them with this trailer load of mushroom compost just on the surface there's no soil preparation or anything going on here other than putting a bit of this that came up off the just the protection for the barn floor underneath that paddock three inch layer of mushroom compost and we planted directly into it. Those are Aram Pila, I think, potatoes that were bought late in the season and we're just growing them on as new potatoes. The potatoes that are just to the other side of this lettuce bed were just sprouting red potatoes from the refrigerator that just went in at the right time. And this was only put together in around June. 
So we're now middle of September. We've had this lovely lettuce crop coming out of this. They're now running to seed. I'm going to oink those out. What I'm doing is gradually feeding those to the geese. We put some catch crops in around the purple sprouting broccoli and again we're planting more lettuce in here. Funny the green leaf lettuce has really run to seed very very quickly whereas the red as you can see standing very well and still growing very slowly. Little catch crop of radish gone in here which we've been pulling a few of them seem to mature at a very different rate in here. It might be because it's been so uneven, the, the root contact that they've had. But oh my, the runner beans we've had off this soil has been incredible. The volume of flour and crop, I've never had anything like it. Well, it's a mushroom compost, I'm convinced of it. Just look at the flour that we've still got coming on and they're all going to be beans over the next four or five weeks as long as the air frosts stay off. Half sort of wishing I put this into a polytunnel really and kept them going longer. But we've had beans every single day and they're still coming and we're trying to keep on top of them. Any spare ones that get a bit thick. Yep, I know, you can see me by the beans. These guys are not particularly keen on beans, they prefer apples. But anything goes their way. Thanks for watching.